Nikali is a warrior from the Street Fighter franchise who is known for his barbaric and vicious nature. He is an otherworldly Aztec warrior of unknown origins and his appearance takes inspiration from various tribal design elements. Nikali enjoys brutally beating his opponents and employs a ferocious, visceral fighting style. He appears to be drawn to powerful fighters all around the world and frequently displays his general contempt for every single being on the planet. Terming himself their emissary, Nikali aims to seize the souls of powerful warriors either for his personal sustenance or to appease his gods. In multiple instances, such as in his victory speech at the end of battles, Nikali declares how he must consume Ryu's Satsui no Hado's energy by mentioning how he was drawn to his endless killing intent. Interactions like these suggest that Nikali's utmost desire is to ingest powerful dark energy, which also acts as an explanation for why he can control negative energy when he is enraged or under a different transformation. As for his other victory statements, Nikali's attitude and choice of words clearly show off his arrogance. He frequently talks about how his opponent's attacks were pitiful and weak after defeating them, which reveals his conceit about his own strength and his overwhelming confidence in it. Nikali has an auto stutter when speaking. His hair is exceptionally long and black, fading to a dull red color. His hair is pulled back into a ringlet bound strands that are tied with gold. Additionally, he has several noticeable scars that cross each other across his arms and body. Now that you have a basic rundown of what the character is and what role he plays in the franchise as a monstrous entity, let us dive into his storyline based on the canon universe of Street Fighter. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us it means a lot. Thank you, and let's begin. I am the Jaws of Death. The souls of warriors must return to me! <laughs> The complete story of Nikali explored. Conforming to the moniker bestowed upon him, Nikali is known as the Emissary of the Gods, while his other title is much more ominous, the Soul Consuming Darkness. According to the information revealed by the Warrior Prophet, every few centuries, the stars signal the hour of battle, and it is said that Nikali rises at this time and begins to hunt the souls of powerful warriors for him to consume as a sacrifice for his gods. The Warrior Prophet, an Aztec warrior priest from a location named Ancient Altar, tells the narrative of Nikali's character. The Nikali mythology is told in a monologue by the warrior prophet. Continuing his monologue, the prophet places a prediction where he foresees that upon his revival, Nikali will devour the souls of the one who agonizes to proceed on his path, the one who fills the world with destruction, and the one who serves the god of fire during the upcoming hour of battle. These warriors were none other than Ryu, Dalsim, and M. Bison. As the hour of battle is heralded, the warrior prophet makes a revelation that Nikali has arrived to consume his soul. The prophet finds comfort in the knowledge that only the most formidable warriors see Nikali as he attempts to devour them. With that final thought, the warrior prophet is vanquished and devoured by Nikali after a very brief conflict, as the power levels are lopsided in favor of Nikali. However, Nikali's appearance alters from his initial shape to one that makes him look a lot more human after swallowing the warrior prophet. Nikali's body also acquires the scars and tattoos of the warrior prophet, which are a major distinguishing factor of this character's design compared to other characters from different fighting games. The prophecy is revealed to be fulfilled and the epilogues flash forward to the following hour of battle as Nikali faces Ryu and Dalsim. Nikali's changed appearance, however, suggests that the prophecy might not come true as originally foretold. Nikali awakens in the main plot as a result of Shadaloo's black moons blocking out the sun. To Mahesh's dismay, Nikali eventually comes across Ryu and Dalsim in Apprentice Alley with the intention of consuming the their souls. In his altered condition, Nikali is able to defeat Ryu after overpowering him, which leads Ryu to lose control over his energy and utilize the Satsui no Hado. Ryu attacks Nikali before the final blow is delivered, but Dalsim blocks the hit and returns Ryu back to his normal form. Then Nikali disappears, turning into a pitch black flaming red dust on the ground, leaving Ryu and Dalsim all by themselves. Later, after learning that their world is currently in peril, Dalsim discloses Nikali's beginnings and origin to Ryu. It was also revealed that in one of M. Bison's visions, he saw that Nikali had been awoken by one of the Black Moons. Following these events, Nikali appears in Charlie Nash's dream as a sheep before returning to his original form, demonstrating his capacity to cross over into the metaphysical realm of reality. After that, he strikes Charlie in an effort to consume his soul. Charlie's focus is then divided as he notices a butterfly flapping its wings and sparkling in a bright white light, which abruptly startles him and pulls him out of his nightmare. Nikali later encounters Bison during the initial invasion of his base. 
face. Bison comes out triumphant from the battle between the two powerhouses. Nikali is then knocked unconscious temporarily by Fang's poisoning while he is stumbling from Bison's strikes just as a precautionary measure. Following this, Nikali uses his shape-shifting abilities to escape the area after being overwhelmed and outmatched. He also comes across Rashid and Charlie at the Shadaloo headquarters and makes an effort to consume their souls. However, he is unsuccessful when they manage to escape using Karin's chopper. Using Karin's chopper. We next see Nikali as he pursues his thirst for powerful warriors. He is able to enter the Kanzuki estate through the ceiling and he notices that Ryu is present there as well. He decides to observe Ryu as the warrior has completed his training. Not much for stealth, Nikali viciously ambushes and attacks Ryu, but he avoids it, causing Nikali to lose his balance and fall to the ground. Aggravated, Nikali transforms into his monster form in an attempt to subdue Ryu and consume the warrior's soul. Even after he powers up, Ryu deflects his blow with little effort. Ryu then enters the state of Hado Kakuse after unleashing the full might of his Satsui no Hado, while also making use of his understanding of the power of nothingness. Nikali then charges at Ryu in a last ditch effort to inflict some damage, but Ryu simply evades his attack and simultaneously punches him in the chest, causing Nikali to return to his natural self. After suffering a one-sided defeat at the hands of Ryu, Nikali questions why he was not able to consume Ryu's soul. Soon after Dalsim arrives on the scene and exclaims to Nikali how Ryu's soul cannot be consumed since he no longer battles the Setsui no Hadu internally anymore. Disappointed, Nikali ultimately vanishes into the earth after failing to consume the souls of all the prominent fighters, Ryu, M. Bison, Dalsim, and Charlie Nash. What is Nikali like in the Street Fighter franchise? Nikali is ruthless, wicked, unyielding, aggressive, ominous, and ferocious. When angered, he displays Blanca's slightly chaotic nature or something akin to it, but he is far more nasty and unpredictable. He does, however, possess a secret gift that enables him to seek out powerful combatants in order to carry out the mission he has been given, which entails appeasing his gods via the sacrifice of others. Hence, he has been given two different monikers over his lifetime, which are the Emissary of the Gods and the Soul Consuming Darkness. Nikali's design is primarily influenced by Aztec mythology, despite parallels to other prior Street Fighter characters and even characters from a variety of other media before him because of his look, particularly while he is in his V-Trigger state. Nikali's look strongly resembles Huitzilopochtli, the Aztec deity of the sun, battle, and human sacrifice. Specifically, Huitzilopochtli's representations and contemporary popular culture. The long and ruly hair is evocative of the ceremonial headdress worn by monarchs and Aztec gods. The snake-shaped scepter that the sun god is frequently seen holding also appears on Akali's loincloth. He emits a dazzling light akin to the sun, thanks to his V-Trigger. Nikali's bright eyes are a last allusion to the sun. The patterns on his belt and shoes are similarly inspired by Aztec art. Nikali holds his victim by the head and appears to offer them upward in his victory pose. Such a show was saved for Hutzilapachtli in Aztec sacrifice ceremonies. The clothing, emblems, and patterns worn by warriors in Aztec civilization made it simple to determine their social position. According to the Codex Mendoza, the design on Nikali's shoes and the color yellow, which also appears on his loincloth were only worn by the Shorn Ones, the most illustrious warrior class in Aztec civilization. The Aztec demigods known as Tzitzimidl may perhaps have served as a direct inspiration for Nikali's character design and origins. It was stated in the mythology of these demons that during an eclipse these female demons, which stood in for the stars, would descend from the sky and consume people. Why did Nikali not live up to the hype? Thematically, Nikali is one of the coolest looking characters in the Street Fighter franchise. He has excellent design inspirations taken from both mythological writings and bookish representations of Aztec mythology. He fits perfectly within the Street Fighter universe, and his origins and purpose of existence propose a major threat to a few of the most prominent fighters present in the universe, such as Ryu, M. Bison, and Dalsim. Even when Capcom presented the reveal trailer for the upcoming character in the new Street Fighter game, everyone was pretty hyped for how they were going to portray Nikali in the game and how his presence would affect the balance of 
of the game. There was no negative reception for the character, as the design team and the team behind the advertising had done a great job prior to the launch to make Nikali into a character for the fans to actually look forward to. The problem therein lies in the execution. Capcom failed to go all in and capitalize on a character that on paper was extremely well written and intriguing. But the main issue with Nikali was that he was supposed to kill off the fighters from the main cast to fulfill what his story points towards. This meant that Capcom had to kill off characters like Ryu, Dalsin, and Bison that they had spent decades building up. These fan favorite characters were simply too important and prominent in the story for the writers to kill them off. These issues, in addition to a relatively dull moveset and repeated losses in the story mode, made Nikali what he is today. Even though it is unanimously agreed upon that Nikali's moveset is not the greatest, we believe that there is much more than meets the eye. Nikali's movesets and combos demand a more straightforward approach during fights, which would explain why he has not seen much high level gameplay. But if a player invests a little time in learning the intimacy of his combos and executes them well in the game, they will realize that Nikali is able to consistently put enormous amounts of pressure on his opponents who can feel stuck in front of a good Nikali player. That is not to say there are no other characters that are better than Akali at applying pressure on their opponents, but every once in a while, one should try out new and different things. Give Nikali a shot in the game to understand how the character works yourself. A very big percentage of the fan base shares the same sentiment about Nikali, where they agree that the character is very well made, but he is simply not utilized well enough in the story, which makes his overall prominence so low that he becomes redundant. The advertising team had pushed Nikali to be the next big thing in Street Fighter, and his appearance in trailers backed the claim. Hence, fans were expecting an extremely powerful fighter with great origins and motives to wreak havoc on the world. On paper, the fans got everything they were wishing for apart from feats. Capcom failed to make Nikali perform any good feats of strength. Nikali defeated Ryu in their first interaction, which was extremely commendable, but during their second interaction, Ryu bodies Nikali with a single strike, which made him a jobber of sorts. Gameplay-wise, Nikali is still one of the most fun characters for newcomers to play, and his eye-catching design is easily able to incite excitement among newer players. On a side note, we personally believe that Nikali has one of the best boss themes in Street Fighter, comparable to or even better than that of M. Bison's, subjectively of course. Why couldn't I devour his soul like the others? What made Nikali such a powerful fighter? Nikali looks to combine feral brawling and wrestling in his fighting style, which is simply described as a violent style taking advantage of physique. He uses a variety of claw techniques, a diving kick, a ground slam assault, and other face slamming grabs in his attacks. His attacks drastically shift during his Torrent of Power V trigger, leaning more towards raw power and employing body smashes and charges. He also has a brilliant red aura and even a whole different critical art. His movements take their names from a variety of components of Aztec civilization, but most notably from the sun and human sacrifice. Additionally, he unwittingly disperses opponents' miasma as he moves, polluting everyone who comes into contact with it. Nikali's gameplay necessitates a thorough understanding of both his neutral and typical strategies. This is referred to as footsies in gaming lingo. Since he doesn't rely on any tricks, his core strategy is quite simple. Nikali's valiant rebellion stomp, which he can cancel into and connect out of, is the focal point of his offensive pressure. Nikali may use his command grab to change up his offensive after the opponent has developed a blocking habit. Nikali can jump in while the opponent is in block stun because of his V-skill, which also recovers soon enough. Additionally, the disc's guidance may be utilized to pass directly through bullets providing the user has a charge. Conclusion. Nikali's personality and powers are very well written, and he displays little to no consideration for anybody who is not his target. He is attracted to the aura that the stronger fighters of the world emit, and it is his sole purpose to devour their souls to appease his gods. His dislike for humans and shallow but wild demeanor is well portrayed in his barbaric mannerisms and characteristics. We would like to mention that even though the story fails to deliver on the promise of Nikali being an extremely strong warrior, the character's design, gameplay, appearance, personality, movesets, interactions, and origins are all worthwhile. And we highly recommend that players should give the character a try just to understand the captivating intricacies of this underutilized character. In conclusion, Nikali is a powerful and formidable fighter in the Street Fighter franchise. 
His brutal fighting style, combined with his ability to tap into primal energies, make him a formidable opponent in the ring. Despite his fearsome reputation, Nikali is not without his own weaknesses, and skilled fighters can exploit these weaknesses to defeat him. Regardless of his win-loss record, Nikali remains a fan favorite character due to his unique design, backstory, and playstyle, and he continues to be a popular choice for players of all skill levels in the Street Fighter series. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone.